When it comes to the conversation of iconic movie scenes, you won't get very far in the conversation before somebody brings up The Matrix. And rightfully so, I mean, just as a movie, The Matrix is one of the most iconic works of film ever made. And today we're gonna be breaking down perhaps the most iconic scene in that film. A scene that has been referenced more than 100 times in other movies and TV shows since 1999. A revolutionary scene in a revolutionary movie. Of course, I'm talking about The Matrix Bullet Time. Trinity! Help! Now this is a scene that everybody will recognize. Even if you haven't seen The Matrix, you probably recognize this from something else. This scene was revolutionary both for the filmmaking and for what it did once it was on the big screen. And today, we are going to be taking a look at that scene and breaking down why it's so awesome. I'm Keir Gomes with Joe Blow Originals, and you're watching Scene Breakdown. The Matrix was released in 1999 and was directed by Lana and Lily Wachowski and of course stars Keanu Reeves as Neo. It's also got Lawrence Fishburne and Carrie Ann Moss and Hugo Weaving. This movie has a pretty stacked cast. The movie follows the story of Thomas Anderson, aka Neo, and he's just kind of a run-in-the-mill guy, but he slowly starts to discover that the world he thinks is his reality may be run by an evil cybernetic intelligence. And it's up to him and a group of rebel hackers to help free their minds and take back control of their world. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, no? No. How would you describe it? Not like that. Whatever. <laughs> Now for some context, this scene is really meant to be uh, Neo's awakening, or kind of his coming into his own. A lot of this movie relies on him accepting his place as the one, and this is kind of where he stops being able to deny his involvement in this overall thing. So up until this point in the movie, he's kind of had more questions than answers. He's been a little bit shy, a little bit wet behind the ears. He's been bullied, beaten down. And this scene is kind of his first run out of that character and kind of his first uh, step into being a hero. All right, let's go ahead and roll the clip. I love this movie. I love this scene. It's one of my favorite movies. I don't know if you guys know this actually, uh, this is actually the first movie that Carrie Ann Moss saw herself acting in. Like this is the first time she was, you know, in a movie and then saw herself in that movie. I think if I'm not mistaken, she did mostly TV in the early 90s and then had done movies, but nothing that she had seen, nothing that had a super wide release. Can you imagine being an actor in the first movie that you see yourself acting in is one of the most iconic and beloved movies of all time. That must be crazy. And Carrie Ann Moss was not even originally supposed to be in this movie. I think they originally wanted Janet Jackson as Trinity, uh, and they ended up going with Carrie Ann Moss. She had to fight for this role. And it's, I mean, how sick is that? That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting already, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Very scary transition there. Look at that. I think it's interesting too, they sucked all of the green tones, or all of the blue tones out of this. Only green. Okay, so this is where, I'm gonna pause it again. This is where, when I talk about this movie using revolutionary filming techniques, this is kind of where all of that comes from. So. 20% of this movie, something like that, is visual effects, okay? And so John Gaeta, the visual effects supervisor on this movie, originally was not supposed to be working on this scene. This was originally supposed to be a practical effect that they used to establish the bullet time. And in some ways, it still kind of is. They still used some practical stuff. Uh, but the original plan was they developed dollies and steady cams and gimbals to kind of create a repeatable tracking motion 
uh, to be able to film the same thing over and over and over, get the exact same shots so that the actors could do different takes. And none of it ended up working. They ended up having to get John Gata back in here uh, to do some visual effects work. So I just think that's really interesting. This scene being as iconic as it is and being uh, you know a visual effects scene was originally supposed to be done practically. Uh, and I definitely wonder what that would have looked like. So interesting fact. Now you know. Tell your friends. <laughs> it still looks so good, though. It holds up. Help! So those ripples on the bullets, you can see them really, really well here. Yeah, right there. Those ripples on the bullets, uh, the way that they achieved this was by tying, I think they tied string or fishing line to actual bullets uh, to kind of get like what the trajectory of a spinning bullet would look like what you know what those trails would look like and that's how they kind of emulated to see what these would would come out like another little fun fact and also if you guys didn't know this there's so many interesting facts about this one scene Keanu Reeves was dealing with a pretty bad back injury at the time of filming this scene so look at this pose he's doing right here I'm gonna go back a little bit look at this pose he does imagine having like a slip disc you know He's on wires, he's not actually having to bend like that, but to be able to hold even that pose for a long time. They had Keanu Reeves suspended on wires to hold him up, uh, to be able to maintain that pose, and then they had wind blowing his hair and jacket uh, back. And when it comes to iconic moment within the iconic scene, within the iconic movie, this is really it. That pose of dodging the bullet, going all the way back, you know, limbo style, that is the most iconic shot of the entire movie. Maybe the most icon one of the most iconic shots in movies would be that pose right there. Yeah, so like I was saying, when they filmed this, yeah, oh, I love this part. <laughs> Dodge this. And he's a goner. Sick. Um Ooh, and then the lightning and then the lightning all those amazing brilliant special effects and then and then this <laughs> this power rangers blue <laughs> that's actually really funny uh but like i was saying so when they color graded this movie they uh, the wachowskis intentionally the note that they made was to have the blues in the movie extracted from the color palette so what you're seeing when you're seeing them in the simulation, how everything looks kind of sickly and like a blend of yellow and green, uh, they specifically pulled all the blue tones out of those shots to really, really push that sickly matrix simulation kind of aesthetic. It's a small thing, but if you're into physical media, some 4K transfers, they the colors just get ruined, you know? And for this movie, they stay that same ugly, sickly green the whole time, which I guess is kind of the point, so... Good job. <laughs> How did you do that? Do what? You moved like they do. Wow, and you guys probably knew this, but before it was Keanu Reeves playing the one, playing Neo, uh, they considered a lot of people. Most famously, they considered Will Smith to play Neo, which I think would have been good. Uh, he he declined it because he says now he says you know he full he didn't fully understand the script and uh, and he was already attached to wild wild west which is hilarious uh that he he chose he chose wild wild west over the matrix uh but they also considered johnny depp they considered uh leonardo dicaprio val kilmer was approached um i think mark Wahlberg was actually like in in serious talks like actually considering uh the part uh, and was gonna be neo which is really funny to think about can you imagine mark Wahlberg playing neo <laughs> and I'll tell you what I really love about this scene. This is kind of the, the thing that I bring up the most when, when I talk about this scene or when I talk about the Matrix. The bullet time concept was used as kind of the proof of concept for this movie. So before Lana and Lily Wachowski were able to make the movie, the idea of bullet time was kind of how they sold the idea of the movie to people. Because the movie's really confusing, and there's all these rumors that like the cast had to be able to explain the theory of The Matrix and the concept and the movie uh, in order to get cast in it. 
which you know is tough it's really hard but the way that they sold that to producers to people that they pitched it to was by using bullet time as kind of their you know even if the rest of it's really confusing look how cool this is gonna be and I think they really pulled it off I mean this is it still looks so good you know there it's a little rubbery some of the CGI it's pretty seamless I think it looks I still think it looks damn good I'm trying to speak through my bias past my bias but I still think it looks great I love it I absolutely love that scene I think for a movie that has reached the iconic status that it's reached for a movie that continues to be a franchise you know I mean they just did Matrix 4 there was bullet time in that movie I mean it created something unique that became a standard across certain types of movies and I love that I love that my question to you guys of course is what do you think of the matrix what do you think of the bullet time scene which matrix movie had your favorite bullet time sequence that's a good one and that is gonna do it for us today on scene breakdown but thank you so much for tuning in and of course leave a comment down below and let us know what scenes you'd like to see us break down in the future take care everybody bye <laughs>